There you go. We got a lot of news uh, to get into other than that, including the fourth, third and fourth uh, major individuals behind the scenes in, in AEW. Following Kevin Sullivan and QT Marshall, we had uh, Raphael Morphy and uh, also um, Dana Massey, who was the wife of uh, Matt Jackson, who'd been there literally since before day one. She had been a part of all Raphael of Raphael was there from day one, too. Kevin Sullivan was there from day one. I mean, they were all day one people. She was pre-day one. I get, yeah. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. She, was at the, she was at the meetings in um, 2018. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. But uh, both of them are gone as of the end of the year. And uh, they tried to re-sign Dana, and she opted not to re-sign and I guess uh, where's uh, Raphael going? He's he's going to work for the Barclays Center. The Barclays uh, Center. Yeah, yeah. He's an executive there. He's going to be booking acts. You know, um, working with with the Nets who play in that building, and you know, book entertainment acts, book sports acts, and everything like that. And he lives in that area, and it's you know, it's it's a job. He doesn't have to travel. It's a good a good job opportunity for him. Um, so that. That's understandable. With Dana, um, you know, I mean, the, the the real truth of the whole thing with Dana is that uh, it was, you know, it's it's a funny thing. But if if you if if you're like in a position, like if you're a wrestler, and this happens very very often, um, you kind of like go with the flow, and you know, you you'll work even if you're unfairly maligned and things like that. And I think that with her, you know, again, she was someone who was at one point expecting to do this forever. You know what I mean? And I think that what happened is that, you know, everything that happened over the last year of her husband, her brother-in-law, you know, vilified and never defended and never being allowed to defend themselves and the company never defending them it made it really difficult like like they were able to they resign they did they didn't go to wwe basically because they got a great offer to stay and it was the best thing for the family the best thing financially to stay and they'd all agreed to stay you know um or they all agreed to the majority vote i mean that was one of the things that they all agreed to so they they stayed and with her um i think it just got too tough because of you know that and i'm sure there's other reasons too but but that was a lot of it you know it's a big part of it is is the fact that she just felt that that uh they were never defended at a time when they probably should have been defended by the company and um you know and and there was the situation where you know i mean you know punk went after her too and she was never defended either at that at that point so uh, that is the latest for uh, four of the founding members of the company, all gone by the end of yeah. I know it's a, be, because it's it's so many in a short period of time. People are like, I'm getting people going like, oh my god, like this the company's sinking and everything. And I mean, like, look the, um, I mean the the advance. The company is not sinking, but it is absolutely changing. It is not the company. Oh, that the it company's used to be. totally changing. Well, you can watch it's, the TV. It's never going to be that company again. No, and no, no. It's a, it's a, it's a different it's a different company, and it, and and whether that's good or bad, you know. I mean, it's funny because one of the things at the beginning that was, I think, probably the most like ironically out of touch knock on the company at first, because if you remember, I mean, like the first year or so, first year or two in the company. Um, all I heard about, like from people who went in the dressing room, you know, like veterans that were there and and people in the company was like they had never seen a dressing room like this. And it was like, you know, yeah, there was inexperience as far as management went because so many of the people in that company that were in charge had never worked in wrestling all at the same time, never worked in a management capacity in wrestling. So many new people. And so, you know, you're going to make mistakes based on that. But the harmony in the dressing room was incredible, um, like nobody had ever seen before. And I remember like people doing this all friends wrestling, and it's like, 
dude, the, what built that company was that exact fact. Now, that wasn't going to last forever, but when that harmony was gone, that's when things, you know, in the long run, you started really having your problems. You know, it was when everybody was in, they, everyone had a common goal. They didn't all agree on how to reach that goal. You know, everyone had everyone had a different idea, you know, and everyone's going to have a different idea of what is the right thing to do, what's going to um, engage most the most number of fans, how you combat being, you know, you're in a fight with WWE, whether you want to be or not, you are. How do you do that? How do you react to that? So everyone's always going to have it. But, but it was a very harmonious thing for a while. And then, you know, it changed. And, you know, I, the change wasn't for the better because they lost their edge in so many different ways because of that. Um, and now, you know, there's this now, you know, their biggest problem aside. I mean, their, their number one problem is that WWE got hot. I mean, like as far as like when when they first had their um, big success, WWE, you know, Vince McMahon was running it. A lot of people in WWE wanted out. Um, it was an alternative. A lot of fans weren't engaged by WWE, but they were fans. And when WWE, when when Vince left, I mean, I knew it when Vince left. I told people, I go like, this is when it's all going to change because this is J J July when he left. I know he came back and everything because Vince was a real negative in, in WWE. And with Levesque, who was, you know, a lot more modern, a lot more open minded when it comes to talent, uh, not as much behind the times or anything like that. It was going to make it very, very difficult. When number one is hot, number two is a very difficult position to be in. Obviously, there were also, you know, a lot of things, you know, with that happened. But a lot of it was just a perception. And then in time, as attendance dwindled, you know, it just the perception got worse and worse. And I mean, the thing that is interesting is, you know, like the advances for these shows are not good. But in the end, you know, one of the things that's been, you know, the, the, the actual attendance at these shows, it's not great. But for a number two promotion, it's not bad either. And obviously, you know, pay-per-view is, uh, you know, the pay-per-view numbers have been solid, actually very good almost the entire run. Um, but, yeah, there's this, there's, they're, they're, they're facing a perception and a momentum problem um, far more than, like, a product problem because you know if you watch the TV you know obviously the ma you get a lot of great matches on the show and the last couple of weeks in particular have been filled with great matches uh, but you know I mean in in some ways do they do they make the matches mean a lot do they uh, do the things to make people into big stars you know they're weak on that like they have all these super talented guys but they are not over uh, they're, they're not over as drawing cards or anything like that and you know like just on the um, the Rampage show on Friday. I mean, they again, they went with Vikingo and, um, uh, what was it, Black Taurus, which, by the way, you should see that match. That match is, it's, it's not as quite as good as their, their, their Ring of Honor, um, you know, whatever, special pay-per-view, whatever you want to call that show, Final Battle. Their Final Battle match was phenomenal. This match was just below phenomenal, but it was still... Um, you know, I mean, it match as far as any match on American TV in a long, long time, it's equal, I would say, to any of them. I mean, I wouldn't say, um, you know, I mean, it was, it was, an, it was a, you know, I mean, but then the week before they had a great one too, the Vikingo and um, Commander and uh, Penta against Action Andretti and the Martin Brothers. So I mean, they're having these great matches, but I mean, as far as in the main event position, you have a bunch of guys who are not over as main eventers being put in television main events, and then they don't draw like a main event should because they're not over as main eventers. They're not built as main eventers. Taurus has never been on um, AEW television. I believe that was his debut, and he's coming off of TNA where they did nothing with him whatsoever. So, yeah, he's got a lot of indie cred, people who go to those shows, but that's not... A TV ratings audience you know so it's like you I'm watching this thing and it's like this match is phenomenal but it's it's again it's not a television main event and you have to understand that um, if main events aren't main events you don't draw and that's you know no matter you know they're they're booking a lot of matches 
that are phenomenal matches, just phenomenal, but they're not main event matches and they're put in main event positions. If they were, you know, as opening matches or prelim matches, they'd be they'd be fantastic, but sometimes they're put in the main event spot. And, um, you know, they, they have that, the, you know, the tournament, the matches in the tournament are, you know, I mean, I don't think there's been a bad one. Um, except the one, the four-minute match was not a great one because it was a four-minute match. Every other tournament match has been either very good or excellent. And that's been the bulk of the TV. So the TV's been really good. But, um, you know, I mean, some of the some of the TV, um, I mean, the collision numbers are, 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 are considering the competition. Collision's actually done pretty well the last couple of weeks. And Dynamite's been hit and miss. You know, Wednesday's Dynamite was a low rating. Um, and with a big lead in, too. You know, this was the first week that uh, Big Bang Theory almost beat them. Big Bang Theory led in with a point two five. They followed with a point two six. It's never been that close. I mean, there was most. You know, they had gotten to the point where um, AW was close to double Big Bang Theory not that long ago. Like, I mean, we're talk about like even a month or two, and now they're almost neck and neck. So, um, you know, whatever that means, you know, it's. It's just it's just a fact. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you? Wrestlingobserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, wrestlingobserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.